Oh my God. When we walked out of that courtroom just now, every single person was shocked. Every single person was frozen. A lot of people were looking at me like, bro, tell me what is going on. Kelsey took the stand before she even started talking. There were fireworks. This started with Kelsey coming in and saying she is invoking her Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and not testify. When someone invokes the Fifth Amendment, they have to be invoking it because if they were to testify, they would be giving testimony that incriminates themselves. She said, I will not testify because I would be giving testimony that I'm incriminating myself. That's what it means when she invoked the Fifth Amendment. Now, the government offered her immunity. They said that we will not prosecute you and use this testimony against you, so please testify. Her lawyer came back and said, well, that's not good enough. I don't want you to just not use her testimony against her. I want you to confirm to me that you will not prosecute her for any crimes arising out of this instance, out of this situation. The prosecutors said, yes, on the record, we will not be charging Kelsey for anything that came out of this incident. And then she testified. I'm gonna go over the whole testimony in the next video, but here's the piece that we just left off at lunch. The courtroom is just, I can't even explain the tension. They asked her, at one point, did Tori ever say that I'll shoot you? And she said, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right, which suggests, they, they asked her, what's the context? When did he say, I'm gonna shoot you? She said, I invoked the Fifth, which suggests that the context was Kelsey was doing something, perhaps Meg was also doing something that would incriminate her. That's the context. That's what I get from it. That's my opinion. That's my read of it. For those of you who have been telling me that I'm biased and that there's only one angle to this story and that a man pulled a gun and shot five times at another woman and that the prosecutors haven't charged him with attempted murder but i'm biased if you believe the story that a man pulled a gun and shot five times at another woman he hasn't been charged with attempted murder and now you have another woman in the car saying i plead the fifth all right you heard the bombshell from this morning let me catch you up on the rest of kelsey's testimony they asked her how are you feeling she said i don't want to be here they asked her what's triggering you she said quote lies from Megan. She was asked what lies? That I betrayed her, that I am a bad friend, that I took hush money. She was asked, how do you feel about the allegation that you shot Megan? She said, that's ridiculous. She was asked, how did you meet Tory Lanez? Me and Meg both met her, him at the same time at a Rock Nation brunch. She continued that after they met, Meg wanted to hook Tory up with Kelsey, that that did happen, that Kelsey and Tori were engaged in an intimate relationship, that Kelsey got COVID, went back to Texas, and during the time she was back in Texas, having left LA, Tori and Meg started getting it on. They talked about the night of the incident. They got to Kylie Jenner's house around 3 to 4 p.m. She was a great witness, by the way. She answered everything extremely knowledgeably, extremely truthfully. I believe every word she said. She never seemed like she was trying to hide something, except when she pled, except when she pled the fifth, of course. Now. She clarified, this was not a party. Those were just people hanging out. There was maybe five or six people before Tori got there. There was a lot of alcohol. She said at one point she did pass out when she woke up. Tori was there. They were all in the pool. They were having fun. She confirmed a lot of the speculation. Tori was hooking up or trying to hook up, flirting with Kylie in the pool. Meg was very agitated, trying to leave with Tori. Tori did not want to leave. She contradicted Meg's testimony. Meg said, oh, I don't remember ever leaving once and then coming back. Kelsey testified they all got in the car. They left without Tori as they were going. Meg is rambling, being just weird, and then says, oh, I forgot my slipper. Let's go back. They all go back to get her slipper. Then they grab Tori. They bring, she, Kelsey didn't go in at that point when they went back, but when they came out, Meg came out with Tori and Meg said to Kelsey, bitch, Kylie told us it's time for us to go. Car, Tori drops the bombshell that he had been hooking up with Meg. Kelsey did not know this. The first time she learned this is in that car. That's when the argument ensues. That's when just lots of arguing is going back and forth. The prosecutor really tried to pin it down and make it look like the argument was only between Tori and Meg and Kelsey was adamant that nah, everybody was arguing with each other. It was a mess. She confirmed that Meg was dissing Tori's career, his skills as an artist. This stuff all crescendoed. The prosecutors asked her about, was there ever a threat made by Tori to shoot? She said, yes. Prosecutor asked her, what's the context? She said, I invoke my Fifth Amendment right. 
You can only invoke your fifth if the testimony that you are compelled to give will incriminate you, meaning that the context around the threat, if Meg will not tell us, <laughs> if Kelsey tells us, it would incriminate her. And it gets crazier. We are on a 15 minute break. Gotta get back into the courtroom very quickly. I sat at 12 o'clock directly in Kelsey's line of vision. I watched her testify. I watched her deny that Tori threatened to shoot her. I watched her confess that she lied to the police when she said that. The reason why she was lying to the police, the investigators, is because she wanted to protect herself. OMG. The rest of the testimony that we just saw in the after lunch session was a prosecutor holding on for dear life to a recording between her, a police investigator and another LA County prosecutor and Kelsey and just replaying that recording and saying, Kelsey, didn't you say this? And Kelsey saying, I did. Kelsey, is that true? And Kelsey saying, no, I lied. Did the LA County prosecutors give Kelsey immunity? I think so, they did, didn't they? That's what I reported this morning. That's what I saw in this courtroom. Does Kelsey sound like a believable witness? No. <laughs> Is Tory Lanez accusing her of being the shooter? Yes. I'll tell you something. That jury, most of them, it looked like they had their mind made up. I don't know which way, but they saw that person say that I lied about all that to protect myself. They're gonna hear that there was gunshot residue on her. We are done. Kelsey is not done. She will be back tomorrow for another day of testimony. In fact, the opening direct examination by the prosecution of Kelsey started in the morning. It's still not finished. It's gonna to continue to tomorrow and then we'll get cross-examination. Let me catch you up on what happened. Kelsey testified that everything that she had told prosecutors and investigators before, suggesting that Tori had shot at Meg was a lie, that she did it, why? To protect herself. Why was she protecting herself? She didn't want to incriminate herself. And then there was this back and forth exchange that just kept going on. They were saying the same thing to each other. I don't know why the judge allowed it. The prosecutor's like, why? She's like, to protect myself. Why? To protect yourself from what? And she just kept saying, to protect myself. Finally, they moved on. The prosecutor's story basically comes down to this. They're introducing evidence that Kelsey seems to deny, but then doesn't seem to deny as far as Tory making offers to say, hey, I'll give you this money when they're in the car and the police are coming up behind them and there's a helicopter overhead. Tory's like, yeah, I'll give you a million dollars. Don't say anything. And she's like, I didn't take that. I didn't know what he was talking about. And then there's another meeting that happens later on between Tory and her. And she sort of, she says, I didn't take any money. But she at the same time doesn't deny that offers were made. The other part that prosecutors are using and hanging their hat on are messages after the shooting where uh, Kelsey is communicating with other people, including a key text message where Kelsey says, Tori shot Meg. That was sent to Meg's security guard. For the cross-examination, what I'm looking and expecting for the defense to do is basically pin Kelsey as the shooter. They're going to start with the gunshot residue. They're going to say she's got gunshot residue on her. And then they're going to start pointing out to all, and there are so many, I don't even think you can cover them all, of the inconsistencies in the stories between Meg and Kelsey. One of the biggest inconsistencies that I can't make any sense of is Meg says that she was out of the car alone. Kelsey says, no, we were both out of the car. She said that today at court, we were both out of the car when the shots happened. Kelsey vehemently denied that she saw the sh any type of shooting. And she kind of kept saying that there were just gunshots that went off. She did not admit how. I think a juror is gonna go one of two ways. A juror is gonna look at this and say, she's been paid off, she's lying for Tory. Tory is a criminal mastermind, guilty. I think a juror might look at it and say, she's trying to protect herself from incriminating herself about being involved in this shooting. And so she's lying and maybe she's the shooter and that's enough for me to say reasonable doubt the prosecution hasn't met their burden. We shall see. This case is not ending anytime soon. Stay tuned.